Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and today we're going to do my July wrap up. Let's get going. I know I've been kind of lazy on these things, so better late than never. Um, we're still in July, in August, so August is not quite yet finished, so I am still technically on time. And but anyways, uh, let's get going. So my first book was A Tempest in, of Tea by Half Star Fazo. Why save the world when you can have some tea? On the streets of White Rolling, Arthur Casimir is a criminal mastermind a collector of secrets. A prestigious team room transformed into an illegal bloodhouse by dark, catering to the rampants feared by society. But when her establishment is threatened, Arthur is forced to strike an unlikely deal with the alluring adversary to save it as she can't do the job alone. I gave this book a 4.5 stars. I really did love it. Um, I enjoyed the writing and the pacing, and the pacing was really fast. I thought it was interesting with the settings that the author had used, which was like a tea house by day and it was a blood house by night. And so it was quite intriguing, but I really wish the author had incorporated more of the blood house by night because it wasn't really quite touched upon. So I really wish that she did. Um, the MC Arthi was a bit hard to connect just because she wouldn't really open up until the end of the book. There were a lot of things where it was overly explained, which I find it wasn't actually necessary. Like we kind of got the idea, but she just tends to be explained more. So, yeah. Um, ex the execution could have been better, and the magic system could also have been properly explained. Like I did still somewhat understood it, but like it could have been better explained, I guess. Uh, and the plot was also interesting, even though there were times that it didn't drag out. So uh, I kind of have to skip a, like, skim a few pages, like just because the plot would just drag out. So yeah, but it was still a fun read though. Also, don't you love it when you smell the rain? Like I just love that smell of rain. I mean, just had rain like a few minutes ago and uh, I just love the smell. And if you hear in the background, uh, those are just people playing some games, so excuse me. <laughs> and my next book is Shanghai and Motors by A. Y. Xiao. As I was saying, <laughs> pawned by her mother to the King of Hell as, as a child. Lady Jing is half vampire, half Hugh Jing fox spirit and an all sad soul. As the king's ward, she has spent the past 90 years running errands, dodging the taunts of despiteful healing courtiers, and trying to control her explosive temper with varying levels of success. So when Jing overhears the courtiers plotting to steal Princess Dragon Pearl from the king, she seizes a chance to expose them once and for all. Oh man, um, my game is a 3.5. Oh my gosh, like this was honestly love. Like, I did enjoy it for what it is, but oh my god, the writing was honestly unbearable. And even the character herself was also unbearable. So like, I don't know, everything just feels rejuvenating and immature. For this person who was supposed to be like a hundred years old, she acted like she had five years old. I am not even kidding. So I'm like, why? This is supposed to be adult. So that also made things worse. Because it's supposed to be an adult, but wow, I just hated the character. She was so annoying. She would always like piss farts or turn like a hundred times every single page. And she would also throw like tantrums if she didn't get her way. And it's like, dude, come on. So that then took in a little bit of enjoyment from the book itself just because of how the character was written. This was also a coming from age, which I didn't really quite expect it to be. So, honestly, I think the growth of the character came a little bit too late. <laughs> but, my god, was she ever annoying. Holy crap. I want to throw the book across the floor. Like, I'm just so annoyed with her. Oh my god, I never met about characters this much, but for this one, I had to. Like, she was just so annoying. Holy crap! <laughs> like, damn, chill out! Like, I don't get it. Do you get it? Because I don't. Holy crap! So, apart from the main characters, which is like, honestly, that's what half of my review is about. So, like, 
just me ranting off about the character. But anyways, about the book itself, uh, it was so rough to read. Uh, the, book, the book was also really slow and the book itself was quite tough to get into because it was so slow and the character as well. Uh, the writing was too immature as I said before and like the antics of our MC was also cringy. Like the stuff she would do, it was also really cringy as well. I, c I just couldn't really stand it. So yeah, I did like the historical setting was also quite intriguing. But I wish it was more explored and the amount, as I said, the amount of words like this part kept repeating along again. Yeah, I hate it so much. <laughs> Uh, but like, I think the but yeah, so that's, I'm not even sure if I should have this as a 3.5. I think I should at least have it, like have it, like at least 2.5 at least, to have start the belongs to the historical settings. Like, you know, like the Jersey, Shanghai, you know, that era. Uh, <laughs> I hated the character so much. <laughs> oh my god. And my next book is A Trial of Sorcerers by Elise Culver. Ice is in her blood. 18-year-old water runner Ira Landon lives her life in the shadows, the shadow of her older brother of her magic's whispers, and of the person she accidentally killed. She's the most unwanted apprentice in the Tower of Sorcerers until the day she decides to step out and compete for a spot in a tournament of five kingdoms. I gave this a five stars. I honestly did love it, but there were some things that could have been better. And like for one in the summary where it says that how she accidentally killed someone, like that has actually been a constant repetition in the book. So I feel like that could have been avoided. Like yeah, we get it. You kill accidentally killed someone. It's quite literally in the story. So we already have expectations of what she's gonna feel. So there's really no need for actual repetition and like throughout the entire book. And also, as the book itself says, like she was in her shadows, in her brother's shadow the entire time. That also has been a little bit of repetition in the book. So again, those two things could have been avoided, because in in the summary, it quite literally really says that, so we know what to expect from the character. But regardless, I still love the book. It has been quite a long time since I actually gave a five book. I think there was that one time when I gave a five stars, but I can't remember what it was. But that's okay, but yeah, I do love the world building, the plot, and the magic system was honestly really good. I like how the author did the whole different types of element. I think they had elemental magic, so that was really quite interesting to see. I did love the friendship between Ayla and Alice, and the way how they understood each other, even if they didn't have to speak. So we finally got to see like women uplifting women, finally. Like all the other books I ever read was just putting women down. I'm like, come on you guys. <laughs> I just really hate when authors do that, like stop it. <laughs> um, the thing that I wish, I, it was kind of, um, not I wish, it kind of took time that was someone did die in this book. Um, but I felt like it kind of flushed over. It was like, we didn't really properly see Ayla actually grieve over the character, so I'm like, what's the, it would almost feel like what's the point of including the death in it, if it was just going to be glazed over, so I wish that we actually saw how the character died, instead of just letting us know like, oh, this person is dead, and like, okay, how? And so. I don't know, I feel like that we should have at least gotten to see it. Um, I also did wish like what I try was to be more I don't know, like more tougher, I guess. Like there wasn't like a lot of fighting, um, which is fine, but like I feel like they're kinda of throwing up the balance. So I wish the tries was more stupendous, if you will. Um, but yeah, so the tries could have been better. And my next book is A Letter to the Limited State by Sylvia Cathwell. A beautiful discovery outside the window of an underwater home prompts a reclusive re E to begin a correspondence with renowned scholar Henry Sell. The letters they share a thrill of passion at first for their mutual interest and then invariably for each other. Together they uncover a mystery from the unknown depths destined to transform the underwater world they both equally fear and love. 
but by no mere coincidence, a scene quick destroys E's home, and she and Henry vanish. So in this, I didn't really like this book at all. Like, like I then gave like a two to a three point five stars, but I'm kind of leaning more towards two stars. Um, it was really hard to read the book. I don't know if it was actually because of the way how it was written. Like the book itself was actually written in letters, like full like actual letters so I never really quite adjusted to that specific format so that could be it and plus it made the characters all boring like I just couldn't really connect with any of the characters because it was written in all the letters so we didn't really get to feel their emotions or what they saw or whatever because it was just really a letter you can only fit so much in a letter so I don't know, it was kind of a mess, so, um, on, and also reading the letters from each other was also quite annoying, I didn't really like it, the back and forth thing, it could have been better, um, and because of that, it honestly made the book so slow, for 27 chapters, it was pretty slow, I almost gave up, but I'm like, okay, fine, I have like 7 more chapters, let's just push it through, I wish I think I left it. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I was so painful. <laughs> um, it kept just like honestly being dragged on and it couldn't really connect to the characters as I said before. Um, for the mystery itself, it actually wasn't written until like 80% of the book at least. Like the other percent were just them babbling about like, oh look at the siblings, oh look at the family and how are you today? All that formal piece and all that crap. <laughs> so like, Oh my! So like all they did before the mystery was just babbling on and on and on about their life. I'm like that's good but like isn't that's a bit too much. So it was a mess. Like honestly I could not care like what's happening in their life in all honesty. So I and especially the exchange letters between Henry and E, the love letters if you will. Yeah, that was also a mess, so I can't also, couldn't also stand that. Yeah, and so the book quite literally had nothing happen until the 80% of the mark, so like, what the hell is this book then? I did enjoy the descriptions of the underwater though, like, but I still had no idea what they were. So if you could describe anything in a letter, I must still have no idea what it is. And so... You know, like, or, or how it even look like. There's only, again, there's only so much you can do in the letters. I'm like, that's pretty tough. And then, so yeah, it was just more babbling, and the characters apologized to each other because they were babbling, and the repetition will repeat, and honestly, it's just kind of fat annoying and really unnecessary. So, I'm like, I don't know, I didn't really enjoy this book for what it is. Um, I kind of enjoyed more of the descriptions and how the author describes, so that's when 3.5 comes in. But yeah, honestly for the actual book, it's more of a two star, so I really did not like it. <laughs> and my next book is of Jane and Dragons by M. Mushin. 18 year old Ayu Hu James dreams of becoming a world class engineer like a father. But after his sudden murder, her life falls apart. Left with only a journal of her father's engineering secrets and a jade pendant snatched from the assassin, a heartbroken Yang follows the trail to the capital of the prestigious engineer's guild, a place that harbors her father's hidden past. The timid to discover why anyone would threaten the man who ultimately chose a quiet life over fame and fortune. And that's the thing, because he chose a quiet life. Enemies. <laughs> so I gave this a 4.5. It was quite an interesting book, actually. So I liked how the fantasy setting was combined with like a steampunk kind of vibes, uh, like with the atmosphere. Uh, there wasn't really any actual dragons, but I still liked the book. The dragons that they were talking about was like how they made a model of it, so that was pretty cool to see. I thought it was clean of what Yang made it. Um, I thought the world building was fine even though I wanted more of it but because of the way how the book is I thought it was great and the world building just you know couldn't have been left as to what it is. It honestly didn't really need more explanation of the world building, world building so it was fine the way how it is. Now one thing for Ying is that she didn't seem to mourn for her father 
And like, I don't know, like, when you have a death in the family, why don't you cry your own blood? So like, it was kind of weird how she didn't cry for, her, for him, so... Yeah, um... And also, she, she came from a small village to like a big city. So you would think there would be like a little bit of cultural shock, but she didn't seem to have any. So I'm like, have you been here before? How come you're not shocked and you know, all that stuff? So that was kind of bizarre. Um, so I think the most of the plot was like, yeah, I, I, but, but like the plot itself, honestly, most of it was about a comedian for Yang, so most of, like every time she had something happens, it would just automatically be played into her hands. So like that's kind of convenient. Um, but I did like the engineering aspect of the book. I thought it was great how the author described everything and what it is. So that was really nice to see. But yeah, I like yeah. So I honestly really did like the book. Uh, my thought was unique. I know like how there was like secret passages and all that, so that was really cool to read, so I did like that. So I don't really know how to feel about this book just because I've talked a lot about it, so I really felt I'm disappointed by it, and that is My Days to Hide by Caitlin Schneiderhan. Welcome to Florence 1517, a world of intrigue, opulence, secrets, and murder. The Medici family rules the city from the sea of wealth, but the people of Florence remember the few decades they spent as a republic. Free from the Medici's and their pop, pop Leo X. So I also gave this a 2.5 to 3 stars. It wasn't really bad, but at the same time it was. Like, I wanted action and quite literally nothing happened for part 1 and part 2. I don't think I couldn't even tell you what happened in those two parts. So like everything else happened in the final part of the book, the three parts. So like, uh, I don't know, like, I just didn't really care. So like by the time that all the sad stories about our characters were revealed, I just couldn't care in all honesty. Like, I think the reveal came just a bit too late. So, it really sucks. So, uh, I don't know, like I kept talking about this book, but like, the, ex the execution just wasn't there, it just took forever to get to the actual heist. And so I'm like, good job. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> so I'm like, I don't know, I just feel really disappointed by how the plot came about, so yeah. So yeah, it really did take quite some time for the heist to come out, so. And, like, there were two, and there was also too many repetitive of characters, which I feel like two paths was honestly enough for the, how in the book it is. Like, honestly, we were following way more of Rosa, so I'm like, we could just stop with Rosa and be done with it. The other characters, I couldn't really care much, so, I don't know, that's that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I don't know, like the book, like this, and, but yeah, this book honestly was just boring in all honesty, and like pacing was also an issue, like something happened and it's slow, something happened, slow. So that also kind of ruined the book itself as well, so, I don't know, like, I kind of felt disappointed with this book, so, you know, I also learned, learned that the author herself is a script writer, so that could also be why. Like writing, like being an actual writer and a script writer are two different things. You have to learn like the different techniques for each thing. Like there are different techniques for writing a book. There are different techniques for writing a script, so on and so forth. So, I don't know, that could also be an issue as well, that, that much is why I found meh about the book. So, yeah, I don't know. So, honestly, it was, it kind of been better. So those are all the books that I read in July. So I read a pretty good amount of books. I don't know what happened. I just read book after book after book. So August, eh. <laughs> I love, then I am reading two, like I have one book right now. It's taking me a week to finish. So I don't know what's happening. Um, but yeah, so those are all the books that I'm reading. And uh, let me know what you guys have read and how your reading month had been. So, and please like, comment, subscribe so you may not find every time I post and I will see you in my next one. Bye!